Welcome to Miss Chow's video lecture. Today we're going to be talking about energy. This is the second video in the unit. I'm going to start with cellular respiration. In the first of three parts of cellular respiration, we're going to talk about glycolysis in this video. Just a quick review of the carbon cycle. In order for cellular respiration to occur, um, it is part of the carbon cycle where carbon is present in autotrophs, heterotrophs, and the environment around us. The energy in which we use glucose is part of the carbon structure. When it's broken down, it can be breathed out as carbon dioxide is a byproduct of cellular respiration. It can be taken in into the environment in form of carbonic acid in liquid form or carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When it's taken as organic compound from the autotrophs, it gets into the autotrophs, and then when heterotrophs eat the autotrophs, it becomes a cycle. The objective here is that students understand where cellular respiration takes place and the three steps of it. So, cellular respiration is the release of chemical energy used by cells. Like us here, humans, we are heterotrophs. We have to take in food in order to use chemical energy. We break the food down into simpler molecules of glucose and release it as chemical energy. This takes place all of things, not just us in heterotrophs, um, but also in birds, insects, uh, plants as well. So the general chemical equation for cell respiration in aerobic respiration is that we take glucose, we use six molecules of oxygen, we should get out six molecules of carbon dioxide, and we should get six molecules of water out of it. Here we have a lovely ladybug, which is something that's living, respiring, think it produces cell respiration. We tend to usually think that plants, such as this orange blossom here, only produces oxygen through photosynthesis. However, the plant is also living, and it is also breathing in um, as well to produce cell respiration. So it does also use cell respiration for its own living mechanisms. So, in general, when an organism eats complex carbohydrates, it has glucose. There are um, species out there that also uh, takes in chemicals, so it would be autotrophs and such things. So, in general, once they break down whatever they're eating into the form of glucose, glucose goes through cell respiration and produces ATPs. There are two types of cellular respiration. Aerobic respiration, which requires oxygen, which will have the final net ATPs of 36. This is the most efficient way of producing energy. Here is another picture of a autotroph, a pitcher plant, which uses not just photosynthesis, but chemosynthesis as well, as it breaks down the chemicals of the insects that it catches into glucose. Anaerobic respiration means you're producing energy without the presence of oxygen, and it only produces the net ATPs of two ATPs. Not very efficient, but you get some energy as well. So let's focus on aerobic respiration. There are three steps in aerobic respiration glycolysis, which occurs in cytoplasm of all cells. Now, in glycolysis, this also occurs in anaerobic respiration as well. And we'll address that in about two or three videos. The Krebs cycle occurs at the inner mitochondria membrane. I say mito, short for mitochondria. And the third step is the electron transport chain. This occurs at a mitochondria's membrane itself. So there's two membranes, mitochondria. And we'll go into detail steps Krebs cycle, or it's also called the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain in the next couple of videos. Here is an overview of cell restoration. You have a glycolysis that occurs in the cytoplasm. 
Then inside in the middle, you have the crab cycle occurring. And then between the inner and the outer membrane, this is where the electron transport chain happens. Okay? So it's glycolysis, where you produce two NADHs, smaller forms of energy, and your preferred energy form, prime form of two ATPs. In the citric acid cycle, or also called the Krebs cycle, you don't produce any ATPs. You get three NADHs and two FADH, lesser forms of energy, which will be sent to electron transfer chain. And that will create a chemiosynthesis gradient, um, which will produce ATPs later on. In glycolysis, it splits glucose into pyruvic acid, or you can call them two pyruvates, which are two three carbon molecules. Glucose is a six carbon molecule, and it turns into two, two three carbon molecules. Both aerobic and anaerobic cell respiration start with glycolysis. It is responsible for 2% of the chemical energy of glucose. Like one molecule of glucose is, has potential. Not very much, but it does something. So the overview of glycolysis is that you take glucose as the, your starting product. You will get out two pyruvic acids, two NADHs, and two net ATPs. Here you have, you start with glucose, changes fructose by 6-phosphate, and that would be two molecules of that where you would get two pyruvates at the end. General overview of the 10 steps. So let's look in those 10 steps more detailed. We're going to learn how we will invest two ATPs. And then the glucose molecule is split into two glyceraldehyde three phosphates. Then you will get out another ATP, an NADH, and another ATP. So this will run twice, where we will total we'll get two NADHs and four ATPs. We could break down these uh, glycolysis, the ten steps, into three steps. Because what you need to know from Ms. Child's class is the starting product, glucose, um, how many carbons will the glucose split into, what is the mid step and the end product. So glucose is phosphorated in the first step here, um, into fructose 1,6 biphosphate. So the process uses two ATPs. Here, glucose converts to glucose 6-phosphate it's going to use an ATP. It's like if you're going to be making some energy, like making some money, you're going to have to invest some money. Then it turns to glucose 6-phosphate. It changes shape because it's an isomerase, a phosphoglucose isomerase into fructose 6-phosphate. You're going to invest another ATP, and it's going to convert to fructose 6-biphosphate. This is the first step. The second step is that the fructose 6 1 6 biphosphate splits into two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphates. So this will split into two 3 carbon molecules. Notice here this was a 6 carbon molecule, it splits into two 3 carbon molecules. We did not lose any carbon yet. We will later in the Krebs and citric acid cycle. Here, the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will produce a lesser form of energy, so you can call it like change. And this process, you will get glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, change it into a 1,3-biphosphate glycerate, which will produce ATP. Here, you're going to get some money out of it. Then the 3-phosphate glycerate go on to the next step. Now, mind you, there were two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So you're going to get two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, two NADHs, which will make two 1 3 glycerate and generate another ATP and the second step 3 phosphate glycerate. So in, now you have additional two ATPs. So far we have 
Nick, we used two ATPs, we got out two ATPs, and we got out two NADHs. Now the third step to glycolysis is when we take the two, three, two of the glycerol high three phosphate, they are phosphorinated. Okay. So in that process, we already had you take that and it turns into phosphoenopyruvate, phosphorated, which will produce an ATP. Now remember there's two of them. So you get two, three phosphoglycerate, go through the second step again, turns into two phosphoglycerate, two phosphoenopyruvate, produce an ATP, will make your pyruvate. So in this process, you only get out two NADP, two ATPs. Please ignore the two NADHs that was in the previous step. Okay, so we get two ATPs. So let's go over the summary here. In the entire process of glycolysis, you put in to invest two ATPs. After that, it splits in two molecules of glyceraldehyde. So everything here is double. You get two NADHs and two more ATPs right here and two more here. So you have four additional ATPs, two NADHs, and then we use two. First step in glycolysis, you make you invest two ATPs, and produces fructose 1,6-biphosphate. In the second step, the fructose 1,6-biphosphate splits into two, where you produce two NADHs and two ATPs. The third step of glycolysis, you produce your last two ATPs here. So the final bar products of glycolysis are two pyruvic acids, two carbons here, and it goes straight to the Krebs cycle. It still has potential energy, so we're going to save it and go to the Krebs cycle. Now if you notice here, we start off with, with the original glucose is six carbon molecule. We end it with two three carbon molecules. Two times three is six carbons, so we did not lose any carbons. Same amount of carbons we started off with. But in that process, we gain two NADHs, which are lesser forms of energy, our chump change, which we're going to convert it to dollars, to ATPs, when we get to electron transport chain. We have two net ATPs, which the cell can use. So far, we produced two ATPs. Where did those ATPs come from? If you forgot. The step one, we used two ATPs. Step two and three, we produced four ATPs, so it gives us a net of two ATPs. The review, what we just went over is the first step, which is glycolysis, and that occurs in the cytoplasm, and glycolysis is the first of the three steps in cellular respiration. Second step of Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, and electron transport chain will be explained in further videos. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you.